no matter what the result tonight was, or was this a, was that something that if you win, you'll go out like this? If it didn't go out your way that you would go back and reevaluate? No, I, I knew I was done. Um, you know, I'm 38. I, uh, have been competing at a pretty high level since, uh, middle school and high school, you know, and I'm just, uh, a lot of intensity and I'm ready to move on to a part of my life where I live vicariously through, uh, other people in the gym, you know, and, uh, my, my main training partner is Corey Crumpler over here. I've been putting him through a lot, making him work for a long time to get me ready for things. It's time to, uh, you know, move on and, uh, do other things and run my gym. And, uh, it was just a real blessing to have a fight like that with somebody that caliber. Um, you know, it would have been great to get an easy fight to go out on, but it was really good to, I knew this last camp, I had to treat it like I'm fighting for a world title uh, to be able to come out with a win. And it wasn't exciting. And if uh, I know people, some people uh, booed and didn't like it, but if you think I wanted to lay there and squeeze him for that long, you're wrong. I want it out. Uh, so it's just what I had to do. So speaking to that, what made you make that decision in the third round to basically just hang on for that victory? So um, it's kind of funny. I went out going in the third round. I was like, all right, I just got to get one more takedown. Um, I'll control and, uh, maybe I'll open up a little bit if I get on top this time, cause it wasn't as, you know, desperate to just make sure I control the round and I slipped on my takedown. So when he hit, there's a lot of separation. I dove on him and I just kind of ended up with that body triangle. And I told myself, you know, one of my, uh, uh, training partners is Joe Selecki and he's the master of holding that body triangle from standing. And I just told myself if Joe Selecki can do it, I can man up and I can do it for the rest of this round. And I thought the round was almost over and looked at the clock and there's three minutes left. And the, uh, I was real bummed out when I saw that, but uh, I was able to stick with it. And I, you know, you, you get to a point where you're kind of past the point of no return, your legs are burnt out. There's no letting go. And it's just what you got to stick with. So when the boos start to come in, that didn't make you want to, you know, re restart the fight, you know, you know, change some blows. I don't know if you've ever been hit by Aaron Jeffrey, but it did not make me want to stand back in front of him. Hey, what's going on, John? MMA Locker Room here, part of Puff Sports Radio. Fanatical win out there, man. How you feeling? Uh, feeling good. I appreciate that. Thank you. So let's look back at your career real quick. A little jog down memory lane. You ever remember finishing a fight like that, being a big underdog? Uh, yeah, you know, I think uh, I, th I started my career that way. I kind of just took fights. I, coming out of college and being a, a collegiate national champ, it was hard to get fights. So I would just travel, go to people's hometowns where they're the big, uh, you know, they're supposed to beat me up and go fight like that. So kind of did that my whole career coming in, uh, taking the fight where Brandon Halsey was supposed to be his fight to get back to taking the title again, you know. Um, but uh, I kind of surprised my ranking is higher than his and I was the big underdog. But, uh, you know, I knew I, uh, coming in, it was just another one of those fights where it doesn't matter what everybody else thinks. I know what I can do. And I was a little surprised that I was never able to open up on the ground. I thought eventually he's going to stop having that uh, explosion to get up, but he never slowed down. So I, I never did find my spot to start looking for subs. Got it. And the same was out there as, you know, whoever fights John Salters, you're pretty much a title fight away from fighting for that belt. I mean, you didn't waste no energy out there. We know you retired, but, you know, you feel like you might be having that itch a little bit anytime soon to come back after that win? I'll say the only way that I come back um, – is if Costello Van Stinas wins the title and wants to fight me again. That'd be the only way I come back. I know he really wants to fight me again. Um, lost a few years off my life in that fight, but I'll do it again if he's got the title. That's the only way. Hey, John, K. Williams for Can Chronicles Media. Congratulations on a well-decorated career. Thank As you so you much. exit the great sport of MMA, what does the term legacy mean for you personally? I think at this point, it's uh, growing the sport, helping people compete in the sport, um, you know, being a coach and, uh, you know, maybe uh, more than that, being a role model to how people need to uh, prepare to fight, uh, how to act when they're fighting and everything like that. So I think um, just going back to my gym, Salty Dog Jiu-Jitsu and Four City MMA and uh, just growing the sport from there. And I think that's where... I want my legacy to be. I never wanted people to remember me as this fighter and everything like that. I want people to remember me if, as a man that follows Christ and that's, uh, you know, I'm, uh, support my family in every way that I can, you know, and I think that's the most important thing I can do. So I hope that uh, that's the legacy that I leave. Hey, John, uh, congrats on the win. Thank uh, you so much. Man. Thank you. Yeah. Um, question, man. Uh, 
you pretty much dominated the fight. I was very uh, uh, impressed with the way that you uh, did your game plan there. But did he do anything in particular that like surprised you, or maybe his strength, or anything that you noticed that you were like, "Whoa, man!" Well, what I really expected that I mean, that's uh, one of the best questions because I, I came out thinking I'm going to trap that far arm. We worked on that a lot, trap that far arm, and then I'm eventually going to move to dominant position. And uh, every time I let go of the arm, he's right back up on it. And I thought, okay, second round. He's he's cooked. He's not going to be able to have that kind of pace by getting up on his elbow, and he did it every time. And the other thing is, I landed some uh, what I thought was some pretty hard shots. I mean, I know I don't hit super hard, but for me, I thought they were pretty hard shots. And every time, he's right back in my face, and just a real bummer that I don't have more power, I guess. But uh, he he was just a stud everywhere and never slowed down. And uh, as we all saw, you uh, retired after the fight. Um, how do you like celebrate now? You're kind of close to san diego los angeles and then what four hours away is vegas you gonna <laughs> you, or are you are you just gonna go back home yeah um get back home to uh, to my daughter she just turned two and uh we're having uh her two-year-old birthday this next week uh so and my favorite holiday easter's coming up so that's how we're gonna celebrate do the family stuff and i uh, can't wait Hey John, right here. Uh, Simon Simono with MMA Junkie. Congratulations on the win and a good uh, and a good career as well. Um, I wanted to ask. Uh, not everybody um, when they're about to announce their retirement is receiving boos. And you know, <laughs> what did you think of the moment? The way the crowd was treating you as you were getting ready to say your farewell. Um, you know, MMA fans are the best and they're the worst. You know, um, I, I love I love the fans and how excited they are. And the funny thing is, the person that boos you when you walk by them, they can't wait to give you a high five and shake your hand. Um, you know, it's just the nature of the sport and I don't like being boring. I like putting people away. You know, I, I'm a finisher. Uh, I think you see that throughout my career. And so, you know, if I'm not going for a finish, it's because who I'm fighting is not giving me any opportunities. And, um, so it just is what it is. That wasn't, uh, my game plan just to hold him down. My game plan was to cook him and finish him. And, uh, just a guy that I'm, I'm not uh, going to find a way to finish. And Jeffrey is uh, someone that Bellator is high on. As you uh, exit, do you feel a little bad that you send him out, uh, that you go out, you know, with a W, but you send this guy with, with an L uh, to his record? No, I think um, you look through my career, you look at, um, you know, Aaron Jeffrey, you look at Costello Vincennes, you look at uh, Dustin Jacoby um, and Chitty and Jaquani. I mean, I've put a lot of L's on people's records that have gone on some big tears and uh, really showed what they have the ability to do. So I have no doubt that Aaron Jeffrey is going to be, you know, a uh, top two or three guy in a year or two. So, um, you know, I don't think that that's going to set his career back at all. And the last question for me, as you leave MMA as a competitor, uh, what do you what do you hope for uh, for the sport from this point forward? Um, you know, I just hope it keeps growing. I think it's getting more mainstream. I think that's huge. Um, and I, I hope that, uh, people realize that, uh, they're, the role models to kids now, you know I mean? There was a time when MMA wasn't, kids didn't watch MMA, you know, they do now. So I hope that fighters realize you need to put on, you know, uh, a good show for how people should act as they grow and show class. So that's what I really hope for the sport, you know? Um, and I'm excited to see where it goes. It's just all uphill, you know, and it just gets more and more professional every day. I think that's awesome. Well, congratulations. Thank you so much. Hey, John, congratulations on your win and congratulations you. on a great career. You've, uh, you've been in this game for a long time. Um, for sure. <laughs> just uh, what do you want your legacy to be? And like, wh what do you want people to remember John Salter as? Well, I hope that um, what people see is that I was not a crazy athletic explosive guy. I was just able to outwork everybody. And I always kind of told myself when I was in college, you know, coming in, these guys are way better wrestlers than me. I can't do a whole lot, uh, you know, my freshman year to, to change that, but I can affect that I'm in the weight room more than they are. You know, I can be stronger than them. And I just hope that people see, you know, even if you don't necessarily have that uh, fast twitch muscle that some of these guys have, that people love seeing these knockouts, that if you work hard enough, you can uh, make a place for yourself in this uh, sport. Thank you, John. Thank you, guys.